Hello and welcome to Maths with J. Here we're going to solve a quadratic equation which has two real solutions. Now what we're going to do is we'll start off by having a look at why we need to use the formula to solve this quadratic. I know that many of you will be used to factorising a quadratic in order to solve the quadratic equation. So we'll have a look at trying to factorise this quadratic first of all and seeing why that doesn't actually work in this case. Then we'll write out a solution to the quadratic using the quadratic formula and we'll see how we can use these three different calculators to give us the solutions. So here's the equation. Now you're asked to give the answers to two decimal places, so that's telling you that there are two answers. If a quadratic has solutions, it's going to have either one or two solutions, so we're told there's more than one, so there's definitely going to be two. And the fact that the question asks you to give the answer to two decimal places is really telling you that you need to use the formula. But let's have a look, first of all, at what would happen if we tried to factorise this quadratic. So factorising means that we would, in this case, have two brackets. And to get 2x squared, well, we'd need to have 2x in one bracket and x in the other bracket. And because we've got a positive constant term, we must have the same sign in both brackets, and that sign must be the sign before the term in x. So we must have a negative times a negative in order to give us a positive 4 and the minus 7x. So now we know we've got 2x minus something multiplied by x minus something if this does factorise, of course. So now what we're doing, we're looking at 4 and thinking about the factors of 4. Well, we can write 4 as 1 times 4, or 2 times 2. So if we look back at our brackets, well, one of them has already got a 2 in it, and we know that the original expression was not a multiple of 2. We couldn't divide the whole expression through by 2 because 7 was an odd number. So we know that that first bracket can't have two even numbers in it. So the only one of those numbers, 1, 2 and 4, that isn't even is 1. So we would have to put the 1 in the first bracket, so the 4 would have to go in the second bracket. So if we multiply out those brackets, then we'd get 2x squared minus x. 2x times negative 4 will be minus 8x, and then plus 4 equals 0. So it looks as if it's almost going to give us what we want, but not quite. It would give us 2x squared minus 9x plus 4 equals 0. So we can see that we can't factorise this expression. We can't get the quadratic that we want from it. So we do need to use the quadratic formula. So let's write down the formula. So first of all we'll write down the general quadratic expression. So we've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So any quadratic can be written in that form. So something times x squared, something times x, and a constant term. And that matches the equation we've got to solve as well. And the solution, the general solution, is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So you can see why we're going to get two solutions. We've got minus b plus the square root of something or other all over something or other, or we've got minus b minus the square root 
of a discriminant all over 2a. So two different solutions coming up here. So now we're going to compare our quadratic equation with a general one. And we can see that the number multiplying x squared, so that's the a, is 2. The number multiplying the x, or the coefficient of x, is negative 7. It's important to include the, the sign there as well. And the constant term is 4, so c is 4. And then we simply substitute these values in the formula. So we start off with negative, and then we've got negative 7 for b, plus or minus the square root of, and here we need to use brackets to make sure that we square the negative 7, and then we're subtracting 4 times 2 times 4, And then that's all over 2 times our value of a, which is 2. So we've substituted into the formula. Let's simplify that. Well, the negative negative will give us a positive, so we can just write 7. Plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squares is going to be 49. And 4 times 2 times 4 is 32. And 2 2 is a 4. So all we can do to simplify that before we use the calculator is to work out 49 minus 32 is 17. So that gives us our two solutions are either 7 plus root 17 over 4 or 7 minus root 17 over 4. So now we're ready to use our calculator And we're going to see several different ways of inputting this solution to the calculator. We could start off with this final answer. We need to input the two different answers separately. We can't do the plus or minus in one go. And once we've done that, we'll see that we could actually input our first line, get the calculator to do all the hard work, all the simplifying for us. Or we could even input the formula and then just give the calculator the values for A, B and C. So there's several different ways that our calculators can do this calculation for us. And on top of that, we can get the calculator to work to a given number of decimal places. So we'll have a look at how we can fix the number of decimal places to two. So let's give ourselves a bit more space so that we can fit the calculator in. So we'll start off with a Casio calculator. So we're going to be inputting a fraction. So we'll start off with the 7 plus root 17. Then use the arrow down and put in the 4. And then equals. And we want the answer as a decimal. So we'll use the SD key to get that answer. So we've got 2.78077 and so on. So we want the answer to two decimal places. So we look at the third place, which is a zero. So that's not going to affect the previous number. So to two decimal places, our answer will be 2.78. Now we can get the calculator to give us that answer. And what we need to do is use the shift button, then mode, and we want to fix the number of decimal places. So we'll then choose six. And then in this case, we want to we want to fix the number of decimal places to 2, so we choose 2. So that gives us the same answer 
that we had of 2.78. And then we want to get the other answer to our quadratic equation. So we're going to go back and edit the answer we already had using the replay button. So we're going to delete the plus and put in a minus instead and use the SD button to get that as a decimal. And you can see that because we fixed the number of decimal places, we're already getting the answer to two decimal places. So let's get the calculator to display the way it normally would. So again, we use the shift mode, eight for normal and one. And that will give us the full answer. So the answer is 0 0.719223 and so on. And we've already seen that that rounds to 0 0.72 because the 9 rounds the 1 up to a 2. Now it's always a good idea to check your answer if you can. So what we're going to do, we're going to store our answer and we could store it into the variable x. So we use shift store x. And then we're going to key in our quadratic expression. So that's 2x squared minus 7x plus 4. Remembering to use the alpha key each time before we use the x. And when we do equals, if we've got the right answer, we'll get 0. So that's checked the second answer. Now let's go back and check the first answer. So all we need to do is store the other value in x and then go back up to the expression. And again, we see it's equal to zero. So we have got the correct answers. Right, so we've seen one method of solving a quadratic equation on this Casio calculator. We'll come back to it in a moment and have a look at another method, but let's now switch to Texas Instruments Calculator and go through the same sort of method that we've just used. So we start off wanting to set up a fraction. To input a fraction here, we want to use the F1 button. So you can see it's green, so we need to hit alpha first, then F1. And a fraction is shown by 1, so 1 next. And then we'll input our solution. So the numerator, 7 plus root 17. And then the denominator, 4. And equals gives us the answer in decimal format. Now to fix the number of decimal places here, we want mode and then down a couple of lines to where it's currently showing float and then we want to go across to 2 and then you can see that it will say fix 2 at the top of the screen and then we press equals and we'll get 2.78 as expected and then we'll go back up to this answer and we'll edit it, so we overwrite the plus with a minus. And this should give the answer to two decimal places. And then we can go back again, use mode, choose float, and we'll get the answer 0 0.719 and so on. And then we want to check the answer. So we'll store the answer in x. And then we'll input the quadratic expression, again remembering to use the alpha key before using x, and then when we press equals, if we've got the correct answer, we'll get zero. So the smaller answer is correct, and then we need to input the first answer, the larger answer, with the one with the plus before the square root, and check that that also gives us an answer of zero. So in a moment we'll come back to this calculator, but for now let's go back to the Casio 
and show you how you can input the original, more complicated looking calculation and how the calculator can work everything out for you. It's important to use the brackets here. So notice we're keying it into the calculator exactly the same way as we've written it down. And so we get the same answer as we got before. If we wanted to, we could, of course, do the, use the SD key here to get the decimal answer and fix the number of decimal places. And then we'd go back and edit the calculation. So best to go in from the left-hand end of the expression. So changing the plus to a minus, and getting the answer, obviously the same as before. And then let's have a look at how we do the same on the Texas Instruments calculator. So the same sort of idea, starting off with a fraction, being careful to use the negative key, and the parentheses, or brackets. And this calculator gives us the answer in decimal form to start with. And we can edit the first answer changing the plus to a minus to get the second answer. And now back to the Casio, and this time we're going to input the actual formula, apart from the fact that we're using capital letters instead of lowercase because the calculator only has uppercase letters for its memories. So we're starting off by inputting the values for A, B and C. And then we're going to key in the formula using the letters. So minus b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this time the calculator is doing all the work. And so long as we've keyed in the right values for each letter, we'll get the right answer. So this gives us the bigger solution. And then we just go back and edit the plus into a minus to get the other solution. And of course, each time we can get the value as a decimal. And then we'll do the same sort of thing on the Texas Instruments. Here we can input all the values in one line, just separating them by a colon. So the colon's um, the decimal point key, just using the, uh, the alpha key on that one. And then when you've finished inputting the values for A, B and C, and hit equals, the, uh, the output will just be whatever the, the value of the last one was. So here we've got the value of C. And then we key in the formula. So again, setting it up as a fraction. Now this calculator is actually capable of being programmed. So in another video, we'll have a look at how you could write your own program to solve quadratic equations. But for now, let's go on to a more advanced Casio calculator, which actually already has a program in it to solve quadratics. So we start off by using the mode button and select five for equation. And you can see that number three is the one that gives us a quadratic equation. In fact, you can see here that the A, B and C are in lowercase, just as we've used. And all we have to do is key in the values of A, B and C with an equals at the end.
and then we're given the two solutions so first of all x1 with the root 17 in and then if we use sd we can get the decimal format and then similarly for x2 the second value we can use the replay button to go up and down between the two solutions and then in fact there's two other bits of information that you could get on this calculator but not actually relevant for what we're doing when we're solving the equation to two decimal places. So I'll leave you to investigate that. We'll have a look at that in another video. And then we need to do mode 1 to get this back to normal again. Now on this calculator I think that's really the best way of solving a quadratic. But some of you might want to know how you could use the calc key to do the same sort of thing. So let's just have a look at how that works. So what we're really doing is we're writing x equals and putting in the formula. But this time, when we use the equals, it's actually the equals on the calc button. So not the equals at the bottom right of the calculator. So let's have a look at how this works. So we've got alpha x as usual to input the x and then alpha the calc key and then that brings up the equals. Then we key in the formula so the minus b plus and so on and then at the end if we hit the calc button it will prompt us for the values I was going to say of A, B and C, but it actually prompts us for them in the order in which they appear. So a bit like when you go and see a film and the credits at the end give you the cast in order of appearance. Well, the same kind of thing happens here. Because B appears before A, you're prompted for B first of all. Let's have a look. So be really careful that you key in the value of B first rather than the value of A. And then, of course, we could use the replay button to get the, the other solution as well. But as I said, you're probably going to want to use the mode button with the quadratic equation solver on this calculator to solve an equation. This is just really to show you how you could evaluate an expression on this calculator.